Everyone seems to agree that privacy is, is important, uh, but many people have different reasons to think why it is important, and uh, some of them are incompatible. And so uh, many accounts of privacy, so it's, it's a little bit of a conceptual confusion, and when you get into uh, practical issues to do with the web, with, with electronic patient records, those kind of confusions, conceptual models, come onto the table and you, know, you have a little bit confused debate. There's a tendency in the audience to, to divide between people who say privacy hooray versus the people who say privacy boo. Um, and that is a very deep divide um, that if you, you project it onto the world map and say, well, you know, uh, communitarian collectivist uh, countries or cultures uh, don't think too much of privacy and individual rights that protect privacy. Um, and uh, Western liberal states um, think it's very important and have, have written it into their um, you know, constitutions. Data protection is a European framework, a way of conceptualizing privacy, whereas the privacy is, is a, uh, you know, put things in terms of privacy is a, is a US American uh, way of, of, of looking at things. The advantage of the, the data protection approach is, is that you construe it as there is something valuable and vulnerable, which is personal data, and you want to put a fence around it, basically. And we, we, we're, we're very much used to doing that. We put a fence around, um, you know, the, we were, yesterday we were in the British Library, you know, valuable medieval manuscripts, you put a fence around it, you uh, constrain access and interaction to the thing that you think is valuable and vulnerable. In a nuclear power plant, the access is constrained because if you don't do it, you know, things will go wrong. The same kind of model applies to uh, personal data. We constrain the access to personal data because we think that things can go wrong. And now, this is the point where the philosophy or the kind of the ethics uh, enters, because now we're starting to get reasons for why we put fences around and constrain the interaction to personal data. And so you, have, you get a taxonomy of moral reasons why we do this. For example, harm. If we know that, uh, that personal data in an information society is like ammunition or weapons, if you leave it you know, lying in the open, people will use them and um, there will you know, be accidents. Um, so the reason to constrain them, uh, access to, to personal data, first is a very solid utilitarian, kind of John Stuart Mill would have liked that, uh, you know, the, the reason why we do that is to prevent harm. Uh, it's a very fairly uncontroversial uh, consideration that can be shared both by collectivist communitarians and the people who are uh, kind of modern uh, liberal individualists. A second reason has to do with the fact that personal data is a commodity. Right? And um, if you use your loyalty card um, then you, there's a quid pro quo. You get um, something in exchange for making your information available. But do you know as an individual consumer what is going to happen with that data? Will it be secondary use? Will it be sold on? Will, how will it be mined? How will it be used? We have data protection regimes to protect consumers in a market for personal data. A third reason uh, has to do with um, kind of containing, and um, a colleague from the US, Helen Nissenbaum, has, has called it contextual integrity. If I share information with my doctor in the context of a clinical setting, uh, and I'm providing this information for him, for, to allow him to make me, or to enable him to make me better, uh, to think about uh, you know, therapy, um, that I would like to, um, that information to, to be contained within that context. And I'm, I'm slightly disappointed to find out if he kind of uh, sells that to a commercial pharmaceutical company to help him pay off his mortgage, right? Because now he has uh, kind of leaked into another context with a different uh, internal purpose and in another goal. We'd like to see those things separated uh, and for good reasons. Also, the information is provided on the condition that it has a certain meaning within that context. And if, if, you, if you change the context, the, the information will be different. A fourth reason where we kind of import the, the, the controversy is that there is a certain conception of the self uh, underlying uh, you know, privacy debates. And the conception of the self is exactly um, the, um, the topic of dispute between liberalism and communitarianism. 
because liberals think that the individual should be in charge of the writing of his own biography, of his autobiography. It's me who is, is deciding who knows what about me. I'm in charge. I'm autonomous. Um, and if you want to know something about me, you have to ask me. Whereas communitarians would say, we need to relativize that, that idea. You know, it's the, the individual um, should open up to society or to the community that he's part of. And he can only be that individual uh, if, if, he, if he shares, not only pays taxes, but also pays with information to that society. I still see a lot of people who are interested in keeping control over the self-image or the identity they project. And what people are interested in is that they aspire to be a certain person, right? So they, they think of that as their ideal, aesthetic, or moral, or other self. And, and um, they would like the other people to identify them as such. I want you to identify me as the person I identify with. I want to be identified as the person uh, with this ideal of yourself. I can't directly manipulate your, your beliefs by kind of uh, uh, tempering with your brain. Uh, I need to control the information flow in order to, to make you have the right beliefs about me, the beliefs that I would like you to have about me. I'm constantly thinking about you know, what, what is the image that I'm projecting. So somewhere um, underway, we have to say, well, perhaps we're not so much interested in uh, allowing people to, con to do this, this incredible amount of control about self-presentation. We can see that they have a, a need for it, and they, that they have a, uh, or, you know, a deep felt need or a, and a right, associated right. But at some point, it becomes probably too much. So I think both uh, liberals and uh, communitarians, both individualists and collectivists, can share those kind of considerations and they can come to an agreement and have a discussion, you know, is this going to harm people, is it unfair in a market for, um, for uh, personal information, um, are there any transgressions across the boundaries of those spheres. And in the context of, of thinking about design solutions or uh, writing laws and policies, uh, that is very difficult because you, you will never get an agreement uh, you know, on CCTV cameras or, or design features of new systems. If people say, well, you know, I'm all for privacy or I'm all against privacy, then you, know, you have a little bit of confused debate. So is that a, is that a problem?